Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I'm gonna to talk to you guys about data types in C Sharp. Now in C Sharp, we're gonna be dealing with all different types of data and information. And generally when you're writing programs, there's gonna be all different types of information that you're gonna be working with. So I wanna to talk to you guys today about the different types of information and the different types of data that we can represent and work with in C Sharp. So down here, I'm basically going to be showing you guys all the different you know, data types that we can use. And I'll be doing that by creating variables. So a variable is just a container where we can store a data value or a piece of information. And I'm gonna be creating different variables that can store the different types of data that we can work with in C-sharp. So the first type of data that we can work with is plain text. So anytime you wanna represent or you know use just regular old text inside of your programs, you wanna use something called a string. So I'm just gonna say string and I'll just call it phrase and I'm just gonna set it equal to a string. So a string is basically just denoted using an open and closed quotation mark. And then inside of the quotation marks, you can just put whatever string you wanna represent. So in here I could put like draft academy. And now this is going to be a string with the text draft academy inside of it. So that's a string and that's gonna come in handy a lot. Another type of data that we can store is instead of a string of text, just gonna be one single character. So if I wanna create a character, I can just say char, and maybe this could be like the grade you get on a test or something. And then when I create a character, I wanna use these single quotation marks, just like that. And then inside here, I can put one single character. So I could put like an A or a B or a C or something like that. But the important difference is that with a character, I can only put one single character. I can't put a bunch of stuff. I can only put one. So any single character is gonna work, um, but you need to make sure that there's only one in there. When you need more than one character, then you wanna move up to the string. All right, so that's uh, the two ways we can store plain text. So things like characters and you know strings of characters. We can also work with numbers. And the most basic type of number we can create is called an integer. And an integer is basically just a whole number. So it's one of the counting numbers, like one, two, three, four, five. Basically an integer doesn't have any decimals in it. So I can just say int like that int, and this could be like someone's age, for example. So maybe someone's like 30. And you'll notice that when I create a number, like any numbers or you know whether it's an integer or another type of number, you don't need quotation marks around it like you do up here. So you can just type out the number as is. And you can do whole numbers like this, like an integer. We could also do uh, negative numbers and you can just put the minus sign right in front of it and uh, c -sharp is gonna be able to handle negative numbers just fine. So in addition to integers, we can also represent decimal numbers. So a decimal number would be you know, like 60.3 or something like that. And instead of storing it inside of an integer, we can actually store it in one of three data types. So there's actually three different data types that we can use to represent decimal numbers. And they're called, a, there's a float, a double, and a decimal. And these basically allow you to store decimal points more and more specifically. So these range from least accurate with the float to most accurate with the decimal data type. So if you really wanna be super, super, super precise with the decimal point that you're using, you wanna use a decimal point. And this would be used for things like money or you know, really anything that you need to be extremely exact with, you wanna use a decimal. Um, a float is gonna be less precise, so it's gonna be able to be taken to uh, you know, a less precise amount of decimal places. And then double is kind of just like right there in the middle. For the purposes of this course, I think for the most part, we're just gonna be using a double. I think for most use cases, a double is gonna be just fine. Um, but like I said, if you're doing something you know, where you need to be extremely accurate, like with money or something, then you wanna use that decimal. So I can just say double and I, I can give this an, a name. So we could make this like a GPA, right? Someone's GPA might be like a 3.2. And so this is a good example of a decimal number. You could also make these just normal numbers. So I could make it like 3.0, but anytime I'm using a decimal number, I need to include this 0 0.0 in there. So that's um, integers and doubles. And those are the two main types of, uh, like I said, numbers we're gonna be able to represent whole numbers and then decimal numbers. And then we kind of touched on like the different types of uh, decimal numbers. So after um, characters and numbers, we just have one more like core data type that we're gonna be representing, which is gonna be called a Boolean. And a Boolean is essentially just a true or a false value. 
Now, a lot of times in programming, we're actually going to want to be able to store true false information. And this might not be something that is super intuitive to you if you've never programmed before, but a lot of times storing information in the form of a true or false value is going to come in handy. So if I want to create a Boolean, I can just say B O O L and Boolean is just a, you know, it essentially just means a true or false value. So I can say B O O L and I can give this a name. So we could call this like is male. And this Boolean will basically tell us whether or not someone is a male. So I could say true if we're a male, or you could also say false, but those are the only two values that this should have. It should either be true or it should be false. That's it. And that's basically why Booleans are useful because they can only have two values. So for the most part, I would say these are the core data types that you're going to be using in C sharp. Now there are a few other data types that we could get into. Um, they're a little bit more obscure and they're not used as commonly as these data types. For the most part, you're going to be fine with just strings, characters, numbers, and then Boolean values. 99% um, of the stuff that you want to do, you're going to be able to do with just this data. And as a beginner, you only really want to concern yourself with these data types. Now I do want to point one more thing out is you can represent these data types outside of variables. So if I came down here and said like console dot right line, I don't have to like store this type of data inside of a variable if I don't want to, like I could just print out like a string like hello down here. Like this isn't actually stored inside of a variable or I could print out like a number. Like if I wanted to print out 30, I could do that. And then when I run my program, you can see we printed out just fine. These are what we would call constants and a constant is basically just like a value just like this 30. It's not stored in a variable. We're not keeping track of it anywhere. It's just kind of written out. Um, you can do the same thing for Booleans. So obviously you don't have to store this information inside of variables. A lot of times it's useful to do that, but if you don't want to, you can just kind of use it like that. So that's the basics of data types in C sharp. And these are going to come in handy a lot. Really with just these types of data up here, you can write a bunch of awesome programs. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve. So if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you want to help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.